So we're gonna talk more now about what you're gonna do to um, heal. Remember, I'm not an expert. I'm just giving little tips and let us be aware of taking care of ourselves and dealing with things and facing situations because we want to try to figure out to what are some of the things that are happening from generation to generation um, which cause us to feel how we feel right and we're gonna also you might notice that it's not I'm not not doing just one straight video because I do my videos when I'm like coming from work or going to work it's not gonna be just one smooth video that's why you don't see me at home sitting and talking because once I reach home I'm just so busy so um, let's move on to the rest of the videos don't do not exit listen because it's very important okay but we are talking about breaking generational cycles now right um, bad habits things which it wasn't our fault it just it's just things that happened um, from generation to generation and we grew up in it and we're trying to be the chain breaker to be the ones that will not continue for example um, if, if you're for child abuse or so beating children and stuff like that it can end with you for example poverty it can end with you for example um, also like people not sending their children to school and hi everyone hi again welcome back to my youtube channel natural living by Inovi and remember to touch that red arrow at the bottom of the video so that you can subscribe to my channel I also do cooking videos I like to talk about positive motivational things some maybe some hard truths but um, at the end of the day it's all making us better people right and um, I would just like to say thank you for watching thank you if you have subscribed to my channel I just want to appreciate you and um, you can click on the bell too so that you can actually be notified when my other videos come up so what I'm doing today is we're going to go into details about the generational trauma they call it intergenerational trauma too so um in terms of how to heal now because the previous video was talking more about you know trauma and all of that generational trauma and the effect it has on us and all of that right but what exactly is generational trauma generational trauma is trauma passed from someone who experienced some trauma before and it has been passed down through the generations to other people in the generation so their children and their children's children and so forth so you will find um, people that have experienced this now originally they had a way of dealing responding to certain um, trauma in their life by a certain way of emo certain emotional ways certain physical ways of reacting where they might they might fight back or they might just cower in fear or keep quiet and so so it all depends on on the people and the type of personality and attract exactly what the trauma was so this type of response is what they call trauma response so a lot of times you so said this type of reaction now you know it's really short term so if something happens it happens like you react but it's a short term survival it's not so because it's not um addressed it's not really fixed so if something happens in the short term you react a certain way but this causes a lot of stress on the person because you're always in what you call a survival mode and this stress keeping in this stress now um, sometimes you're in this survival mode and even situations that are not really traumatic you know but you might see it as that situation that is traumatic because of um, how you have reacted what has been happening through the years and also for example you might be fearful of a situation and there's no really fear there um, I think they talk about PTSD and stuff like that but we're talking about like fear it might not be something that you really should be fearful about but because of what has happened to you before so suppose you were attacked walking down the street um, one night you might be walking down the street in the day and you're afraid because maybe nothing might happen to you it's less likely but you're still um, very fearful that you might get attacked again that sort of thing or you might have been in a car accident and because of that you just fear of 
you have this fear now of going into a motor vehicle so that is what you call now being in a city so you do go into a car but you're still fearful so living in that sort of fear constantly can lead to even other physical ailments like high blood pressure and heart disease and all of that so stress is not a good thing so you have to find ways of dealing with these and he and to heal from these things so what you're really looking for now is a situation where you can thrive but you cannot thrive in fear so you have to thrive now in a situation of of security you feel secure and safe so that way you know you can just be normal you're not on edge or anything like that you just relax and you're normal and you live your life and enjoy your life and don't without freaking about stuff so anyone who has experienced trauma they might have a problem keeping calm and that is what you sometimes leads to what you call anxiety you always feel anxious that something is going to happen so because trauma is is inherited throughout generations what you have to do is for a number of to, to get rid of that trauma now you have to try to eliminate that sort of stress from the lives of your children and your children's children so for example if part of the trauma was um parental abuse like beatings and so forth um you have to know once you stop those beatings and you you live give your child a more loving environment you now an encouraging environment to live in then they can pass it on down to their children and then they pass it on to their children so they wouldn't have experienced it or been be around the grandparents who maybe talk about it or stuff like that so that's how you, you heal over time so it's not a quick fix thing you have to heal over time so you now have to try and, and remove yourself from situations in which you will you know you will experience that trauma for you to heal and also know you, you gradually know you do things now that gives you peace and happiness and joy and all of that so what you can do now is um when something happens that gives you stress you have to look back and find out why am i feeling the stress you know and then when you look into it now you try to see what can you do to not feel that stress so that is how you're gonna start now um in terms of finding ways now to heal from this the, the trauma and to find less stressful situation so a good way of of um dealing with a stressful situation you notice sometimes you really worry is what causes a lot of stress so when you are worried it's because you're thinking about things that are not in the present moment you're worrying about so for example you're worrying about an exam or you're worried that you might have to go around somebody that you're gonna feel stressed out just to be around them suppose you have um toxic family gatherings and christmas coming up and you don't want you know if you're going to, going to end up in a hole a lot of quarreling or or other behavior that might stress you out right like there may be people there who just ask a lot of questions and try to get into your private life and it might be annoying and stuff like that so whatever it is so you will start from november finish or even up mid-november you start to think about um those things but if you just um you have to practice something you have to practice and be aware of you just try whenever your mind start to wander and you start to worry just bring back yourself to the present so if you're in the shower you don't start thinking about because that's when you think a lot too, thinking about you don't start thinking about all sorts of things but when you're in the shower now you see you focus and say okay oh this water feels so warm or so cold on my body it feels good and i love how the soap feels i love how my body scrub feels or you know or if you're taking a bubble bath you just say oh this is so relaxing and you just you know be in the moment enjoy the moment and don't let your mind wander off too much so that is what is called mindfulness when you live in the present and experience your feelings in that moment and don't keep wandering you see if you practice that that can really really help you in managing stress you're not worrying unnecessarily about things you know an important thing though when you're dealing with this type of 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 with with trying to to deal with stress do not go to alcohol and drugs and what, what they call recreational substances do not go there because then that's how you get addicted to things you know you want to deal with things you're not trying to cover up or hide anything you want to deal with your emotions so more than likely you have to, if it's really bad you have to get professional help and they will teach you as i said i'm not an expert i'm just talking about things and i read a little thing here or there and you know and 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 you know what i'm caught is just bringing i'm bringing up the subject now so 
you now will have to go to the experts to find ways of, of, of coping with, with properly coping and learning tools and so to, to um, deal with stress management. Another important thing is to um, get some, you might need a break, so don't go to work 365 days a year and you don't take your vacation. Take your vacation time. Take you, if you're feeling sick and you need to go to the doctor, you go to the doctor, take your sick day and go to the doctor. Don't just leave out and at 2 or 1 and you're rushing traffic, go back to your office. Go to your doctor, calm down, take your time, talk to your doctor about what is bothering you. Go and fill your prescription. Let's talk about how are we gonna heal, right? One of the first things you have to know and understand, it is not your fault, okay? Say it with me. It is not my fault. It is not even your parents' fault sometimes because it's what they learn from their parents. For example, slavery, for example. Um, people were taken from their countries. They changed their names. They, they made them forget about where they're coming from. They abused them and all of that. They took the men away from their, their wives and the children away from their parents. So, and then they would use the men, some of the men, they would use them as just like to produce offspring and they would let them have different women and all of that. So a lot of these things you see in the society now where men are just going around uh, 10 different women and having children and so it is something so it's gonna take a while for these things to to come out of the system so a lot of it is not really um people they have to relearn like this i see the, these young men coming up now really learning how to be great fathers you know and and i'm so happy to see that you know another thing now you have to face the truth you cannot be in denial if you're in denial you will never get to solve the issue right if you're saying you keep blaming other people for things that maybe you learned from your mother or you learned from your father or something and you might be in a relationship and your spouse is saying why do you keep doing this or doing that this is a little cold why and then you will be saying oh it's not my fault is you if you never do that i wouldn't do that no you're not going to the blame thing you're going to look into yourself and say, why did I do that? You know, why, why am I insecure about something or the other? Right? So we're going to face the truth. Right? Give me some, I uh, make some comments and let me know some of the things you, you think you are in denial about and you look, you've looked into yourself now and you're saying, oh, this is really something I have to deal with. Okay. Okay. The next thing is the third thing is do not accept stereotypes do not let people put names on you that you don't want don't like for example growing up they would call indians and mixed indians coolies what is a coolie a coolie is an uneducated person so don't call me no coolie because i'm educated okay right so that sort of thing this thing about angry black woman every nation have angry women so don't talk about the angry black woman because don't let anybody label you that way, all right? So those sort of things, right? I, um, those are the two I can come up with right now. Any other one, let me know. All right, let's talk about them. We can talk about them in detail. We can do a live. Let me know if you want to do a live and we talk. You know, you can come on and we discuss and stuff like that. Okay. See, if we're going to heal, we will be stronger if we heal together. We have to help each other up don't watch your brother or your sister fall down you know if if you see they have a way to say fix your sister crown if you see it lean let me speak in english because not everybody will understand my jamaican accent right all right um so fix your sister's crown if you see it is it needs to be fixed don't be one of them to to make push it off some more so that it topples off her head right especially a lot of times in the workplace people love to tear down each other if somebody gets like a, um something happens and they look bad in a meeting you will see the other ones will smirk and stuff instead of just saying okay never mind next time you know we can't you can do a better job if you need any help we can talk about it that that is much better than to be laughing and and stuff like that you know take care of yourself right 
nobody wants to come home and cook seven days a week if who don't want to eat a little leftover they will either go cook or they take they, they take they go on to take out or something you can be especially if you are a full-time if you have a full-time job and you have children coming home every day to 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 to, to do that sort of thing some men even they work and the wife is at home and they have to come home and cook and do a lot of stuff too so if you have to balance it out right you have to take care of yourself why you can't go to the beach why you have to be, have a perfect figure to go to the beach some people haven't been to the beach in years because they're waiting until they get the perfect body that's not what it is. yes why do you have to have a perfect weight to go to the beach you don't have to wear a bikini you can wear a full bathing suit or even a shorts or tights or something if you feel insecure about something you know it doesn't have to be a perfect time you don't have to wait until you have a spouse or something to go to the beach go with your little nieces and nephews or the children or whatever have a family trip or go by yourself i have done drives like i've done a like a weekend thing where um a little more than a weekend i drove to the south coast of jamaica i stopped in the grill and i drove to montego bay i spent a night in montego bay then i drove to ocher spent a night in in ocher and i drive back to kingston all by myself you know you have to learn to live like a life you know that when, when we're having jazz festival i didn't always have somebody to come to the jazz festival with me i went anyway so that sort of thing you have to learn to enjoy your own company don't be what anybody say just fix up yourself and go out and don't be with nobody just fix up yourself and go out and don't care about what anybody is saying express yourself don't keep a lot of stuff bottled up inside um, but don't just blurt it. don't keep piling it up until you just one day you just let it all out and then it comes out very hurtful just think about it and try to find the best way possible we don't always know how to express ourselves in the best way you now but you have you can google it and find ways to just say ways to whatever it is or ways to ask about something what is the best way to speak to my spouse about whatever the topic is that sort of thing and i'm sure you will find something on it all right i don't want to sound too cliche or anything but exhale exhale stop just oh just exhale exhale and relax don't business what anybody is saying about what anyone is saying don't business what the neighbors are saying you could live in a neighborhood and every every other house you have is a couple and you might be the only single person around go out and do your gardening you don't have to, that is i find gardening very relaxing you don't have to wait on anyone to 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 come and do things for you do them yourself who cares i use i like in my neighborhood i never see like anybody washing their car any woman washing the car but i go out and wash my car because it's too many hours to go and sit at a car wash on a sunday and i just if, if i wash my car it might take me about an hour hour and a half right and then you can maybe find another day to do the detailing and all of that no, I see people come out and wash them cars. So if I was watching neighbors, you know, you find a lot of people who have been in relationships for a long time. They they think oh they not they shouldn't do certain things and all of that. I go out and weed up my yard. But and it's good exercise too, you know. So don't think it just do whatever you like to do. Do whatever pleases you. Don't think about what anybody is saying because maybe there are other people who would want to be doing the same thing, but they don't see anybody doing it. So, you know, I rake up my yard from the back, come right from because growing up, I used to rake up my yard. Some people never used to do that, but for me, it's it's okay. It's not. I had brothers, but I don't wait on them all the time. I just get up and grab the rake and rake up the yard. That sort of thing. You can go, you can go for drives to the country. You can go have a picnic, you can go buy Hope Garden, spread your little sheet and whatever and you have a picnic, bring your book and you just relax, listen to a little music or read a book and you can sleep and wake up and you know, just do your thing, you know, you don't have to wait on anyone, you can go for lunch by yourself, somewhere peaceful and just have a nice lunch, you know, you can go eat an ice cream by yourself, you don't have to be waiting on people and if you have somebody who is always busy, 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 said to your spouse okay we have to have this day which is our day it's our time you know get a babysitter or if you have adult children you ask them or ask a neighbor or somebody to babysit but be careful of who babysit the children still but 
ask, ask a family member if they can babysit for you even once a month, you know, and you can pay them a little something and encourage them, you know, that sort of thing. Okay, get closer to God. You have to understand, God said, come as you are, right? Come with your burdens. You don't have to be perfect to be a Christian because God and the Holy Spirit is what helps you to become a better person that's why you see man go through trials you know because it's like metal in fire you have to burn the metal in the fire to um to to to, to purify it so when you see you going through certain trials even when you really become a christian it's like you're being purified you might be learning to be calmer that sort of thing you might be learning to do a lot of things um better to become a better person um, talk to God, you know, if you don't have to tell everybody your business in your prayers, you say to God, you can just sit in your car, so you know, and just talk and say, God, this has been a rough week. Can I just make sure next week is better for me? That sort of thing, you know, if you say, Oh, Heavenly Father, I come to you now in prayer, and nothing is wrong with that either, you know, and give Him glory too, give Him glory because you, you come to Him with praise and all of that, right? And you, you give him glory and say, God, and if something happens good, you don't just go to God when everything is bad. You say, you had a great week. If you had a nice calm day where nobody really bug, bugged you at work and you got to do some good work, you say, God, thank you for today, you know, and sort of thing. But again, sometimes I get frustrated. I say, God, I remember one time I got so frustrated and I said, God, see, for the past three years, I've been through this. This happened to me. That happened to me. That happened to me. <laughs> When am I going to get a break, you know? God, what happened? You forget me, you know? We know we not forget you, you know, but just say, sometimes you just reach a point where you say, God, remember me. Remember your child. Jesus intercede on my behalf, you know, that sort of thing. Talk to God, you know, he's your father, he's your daddy, your daddy God, right? Okay, Um, a lot of things that cause stress to people, don't want to look like anything that they want to forget about in their past for example you may not have had a nice car growing up your parents may not have had a nice car and you feel embarrassed driving in the car and uh, so you might say to yourself i'm never gonna have an old car and all sorts of things like that and the pandemic has humbled a lot of us you know we have learned to do make use and do with what we have you know a lot of people they have a nice car but they don't own a house they keep changing their cars but they're pressured they can't even go out and buy a nice meal because the, and this the, and it's not like anything was wrong with their car now they just want to keep up with the times and the competition with people and all of that my car is over 10 years old way over 10 years old but i want there are other things that i want to achieve before I decided I'm going to change my car. I'm not going to want a car loan right now because I have certain things I need to get done. You know, so it's up to you what you want. You know, it's not like I need a car to do a lot of other things. I don't have a, a traveling job or anything like that. So I just need my car to go to work, come back, go in the car, the place I want to go. So, you know, that sort of thing. Don't watch people and then you put yourself in debt and end up maybe if you lose your job, you lose your house, you lose the car. Try pay off your house first. Try try get a deposit for your house or something save up before you decide to be changing your car, changing your car. Unless you get a really big discount or something, you can change it and make a profit on it. That sort of thing. But don't just change it for changing sake. You know. I heard this guy say one day, "Oh, you have to understand. It's a part of life. You're always gonna have a car loan. No, you know, always have to have a car loan." You can drive your car for a couple more years, even 10 years if you buy it new or take care of it properly, right? You don't have to always have a car loan. You have to learn to focus on life, save some money for your retirement, help your child with their with their education so that when they finish and they have this big student's loan and can make something of themselves and they have to be paying off that they can't even get to go do their masters or have like a freedom to do other things to focus on their career and maybe buy a house and create generational wealth you know for you you don't want your children to go through the same suffering mind you, you don't want them to be too spoiled either but you have to or they can they, even while they're working they can start a business too and stuff like that they don't have to be have this big everlasting burden of a um of, of a student's loan you know some of us didn't learn 
proper money habits from our parents our parents just spend and like they would um have a lot of you know give away their money or uh, to people who were undeserving of it um a lot of people come what we call eat out <laughs> They come around when they know you have money and then when the money done they're gone that sort of thing so you have to make sure whatever you're doing you put away some money for your future and for your children's future and for your old age you know to take care of yourself when you retire to take care of your children oh my goodness to take care of your children um in case of an emergency or even when you pass away so that your children are not left with the with the, the debt the, the burden of of um whatever debt you might have been in or even to bury and stuff like that you have to be practical you know so we have to find start practicing proper money habits cut out that um like for example us in jamaica a lot of times when you say we go away and shop it's not something we do every day a lot of us we save up like for two years and we go away once every two years and we shop that's why I don't stay at people place when I go away to shop because they see you spending and they think that um, you have money but that's not how we do it we go and we save up for two years don't do any shopping maybe just buy something basic that we need and um, we just go and get the, the, the sales and the deals. We buy things that are timeless. So you don't buy every fad thing. So if everybody see you in it, um, they know exactly which, which year you bought it and stuff like that. You know, you can buy a one or two thing, but things you have must be timeless. So all if a 10 year pass, so you have a nice gown. If a 10 year pass or so you can't still have that in your class. So you buy a nice gown when you're in your twin or say 30. You know, you can wear that gown every five years and nobody not have to know, say, is how long ago you buy it. Just one of the things is to try to keep your weight. Don't keep, so when you change your weight, it is very expensive because you have to keep buying new clothes. Try to keep your weight within a range so that your clothes can always fit you regardless. Or buy things that you know can adjust to your weight. Your weight, if you know, or somebody might put on a five or ten or fifteen pound, and then you take it off. But buy things that can adjust to your weight, you know. And uh, some people keep saying, "Oh, I'm throwing all that because I will never go back, go back down to that size." Don't listen to them. I I go back to certain sizes all the time. Mango season. I always talk about my mango season. When it's mango season, we go and put on weight. That don't mean me go throw out the rest of the clothes that my, that can't fit me anymore you know that's another thing maybe i have to think about me and this mango season thing but you know we jamaicans have a have a um a passion and a weakness for mango and another thing about money habits too is people will come and ask you for money and borrow and don't pay you back there's a saying once bitten twice shy and if it's something that they keep doing especially family you have to learn to tell them no because they're just taking advantage of you and your kindness, right? And another thing that I learned late in life is so you get paid and you take out 10% and you put it in a, a savings account. And anything that is left back in your pocket, that's the amount of money you have. You, if anybody asks you for money or so, you don't have it if you don't have anything else. You don't think about what is in that savings account. That is not your money to touch. So you just say you don't have it, you don't have anything um, to lend them because your savings is your savings, your savings and investment is not something for you to be touching and giving away and stuff like that. If it's like your parents and they have an emergency surgery or something like that, well that is different, you know, or your child or yourself or something. But you can't just be arbitrarily giving away your money like that and going into your savings because those people are not going to go into their savings, you know. I've seen people who have helped and then I see them people that make some big money moves you see I couldn't make them big money moves so they're there saving and coming to me to help with other things and them not touching their money you know so you have to learn to be smart we have to do another a separate video about being smart about money and budgeting and stuff like that um, I'm not sure how much you understand about soul ties and um, generational curses 
I said I wasn't gonna really go into this so much, but if you see certain trends from family to family, um, generation to generation, it happened, you, 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 the grandparents or great grandparents and your parents and you and even your children having certain habits, that means um, there are certain curses you need to break off your family. And I have to do, a, I might, I'm gonna do a, tell you how to do that at the end, but um, that might have to be a separate video. I'm not an expert, but you can read up and understand how to do these things, you know. <clears throat> so you have to learn to pray off certain things off you. And there are so many prayers on the internet that you can research and pray those prayers over you and your family and even your friends, whoever you want to pray them off about. Soul ties is when you have an intimate relationship with somebody. You might not have to have gone to bed with them, but you're in a relationship. So but like when you're not around them, you, know, you keep thinking about them and they might not, if somebody you're going to, um, like a boyfriend, girlfriend sort of thing, and um, or even a husband or a wife or something like that. And you find even when you break up, you can't stop thinking about them and they can still call you any time of the day or night and ask you to do favors. And the only time they call you is when they want favors. And every time they call you, it's like you can't help yourself, but you have to, to do that favor for, for them. You, have a, you ever have an ex or so, or a boyfriend that you're trying to break up with, but you can't break up because you're just weak for them, that sort of thing? In Jamaica, we call them yamed. <laughs> that is what we call um, soul ties. So you have to learn to break those things off. And if you see you keep having bad relationships and your mother had bad relationships, your grandmother had bad relationships, those things are generational curses. You have to learn to, to identify those things, to be honest about them and stop finding excuses. You just have to, to own up to it and then you can really deal with it. So we we'll go back to, a little bit to um, what we were saying about learning about proper money management and all of that you see when you give away everything that you have to people and you see, you see when the time comes and you need help the same people you help not are not going to help you someone once said to me the people you help are not the people who are going to help you so another thing is um learn to free yourself from the expectations of your ethnic community it could be that in your community um, they think you're successful if you become a lawyer or a doctor or a chartered accountant or something But you might just want to be a chef So don't get burdened by that do what it is that you love to do in life. Otherwise, you will not be happy You know, um, I've seen people do a lot of things because of family expectations and um, They ended up being so unhappy in life because of that. So whatever it is your com ethnic community is expecting of you and uh, it could be, be getting married to someone of your same ethnicity you know it could be that they want to like people who do arrange marriages um, like for example I have cousins who are they're much older than me but they are full Indian so when they were younger they had arranged marriages some were actually in love with the person they married to not all of them one of them i heard she cried the whole time but luckily after a while she got to really love her husband but those are the things if you do and if you don't marry to somebody within your community the, the family could would just write you off you know disown you so um but another thing you know I'll, I'll, let me tell you something you see if your parents if you have good parents, that's the other thing. You see, if you have good parents and they don't like the person you're talking to, listen to them. Listen to them. I mean, anybody my father never like, you know, you know that it's not going to work out. And I never see, he never, my father wasn't the one who was going to say anything. He would just, you can't know by my expression, him, I don't know, well, if I talk, him come in and say hi, and that is it, you know? You just know that you will look into yourself after a while and say, you know, I should have realized that my father never really approved of that person or so, you know, that sort of thing. 
Um, stop feeling sorry for yourself and stop blaming your, your, your family or your parents for everything that is happening to you and happening to you now. If you're 60 years old and you're still blaming your parents for, you, for why you never go to school and get an education, get over it. Because if you did really want to get an education, you'd have found a way to get an education. Sometimes parents they don't gone a long time and you're still blaming your parents for not going to school, whatever type of school you wanted to go to. Right? Um, yes, maybe they had something to do with it, but like they didn't send you to the school, they sent you to go work or something. Cause like in the older generation, a lot of people you didn't have other scholarships and stuff to either. So the parents would send them to go do trade, I call it trade. And maybe they would have wanted to go to school to be something else, you know. So, um, just own up to it and stop the blame game. What you can start to, to do is have a, um, I hear, um, writing down the things that you're grateful for. So at least if you're not where you want to be in life, you can still look and say, oh, you know. So, so for example, you wanted to be a doctor, but you're not a doctor. And you really hate your job that you're in um, what you can say is you maybe have you can say I'm grateful for my children I'm grateful that I have a house I'm grateful that I'm happy I'm grateful that I have I do things that I like I'm grateful for my hobbies you know I'm grateful that I, that I have a YouTube channel that is making me some money I wish the day will come I will be able to say that I have my channel that making me that's making me some money so um, things like that just write down whatever it is you're grateful for you can be grateful that you are calm and you don't have any stress in your life you can be grateful that you're healthy you can be grateful that you have a church community that that you enjoy being around because not everybody enjoy being in their church community you can maybe you can sing you can say i'm great you know what people want to learn would love to be able to sing and i would do something with it if they could sing and so many people have this gift of singing and they don't put it to any use they just sit there with it you know even come on youtube and do some singing or something whatever it is go to church go on the choir or something or you know just do something with it write on the things that you're grateful for and keep repeating them so you remember them you know you have to learn to forgive this is a big big one learn to forgive forgiveness is not for the people that you're forgiving it's for you forgive them for what they have done even Jesus on the cross said forgive them Lord because they know not what they do some know what they're doing in our case but you have to learn to forgive right I see people holding on to things some little childhood things you know like their mother maybe give their sister the better dress when them did young and all of them something there and know that the parents are older they're still holding on to those things the mother may have treated or the father may have treated the children so you have a stepfather maybe he treated his or the mother treated his children better than you because it was his money taking care of you just forgive let go of it let go of it and and because that is eating you up it, I've seen people have mental issues because of these things, you know, they're holding on to all these things from they were young. You have to learn to forgive and forget, you know, move on. Learn your lesson though when you say forget because you have some, for example, if you're in a bad relationship and um, I remember I lent this guy on my car one time and he did, something happened to the car and he didn't help me to fix it back. And for years, I have up the guy for this, you know, and I realized that every now and then I would book him up and here we talk and we talk a little. I'm realizing I'm always having car problems. I said, my goodness, you know, me have to forget this thing because I have him up in my heart about that car thing. Maybe that's why I'm can I'm always having car issues if it's not an accident or something. So I had to forgive him because I didn't want because of me somebody is can live a life that is good regardless of what they have done in the past you know that is what we call bad mind just just let it go because you see when you let it go god will also bless you too you know god will bless you when you let it go because don't be 
don't find joy in watching the struggles of people who have hurt you right and say oh that is karma and whatever do not find joy in it so you might maybe say I hope they learn the lesson or something you know but do not if you find yourself finding joy in it ask God to forgive you because that's not a good thing okay as we continue to forgive ourselves um, and forgive others you have to some people um, maybe they made a lot of sacrifices for the children and they don't think that children appreciate it enough um, or appreciate them enough and they have a lot of, of negative emotions inside what you should do if that for example you made a lot of sacrifice for your children and even the children too will hold some sort of hostility because maybe something they wanted and you didn't make that sacrifices for them because maybe you were doing something for yourself at that point in time and um, so the parents might feel that the children are ungrateful and the children might feel that the parents didn't do enough for them so both sides have to forgive each other um, so you have to forgive your children for being in your mind being ungrateful and it could be just that maybe at the time what they wanted they saw it as very important and you didn't see it as being as important as they saw it and the children maybe the children have this sense of um, entitlement and that no matter what it's, it's the parents alone must always be sacrificing for them and so they not they shouldn't be able to like get a like a holiday job when some are come and try to work towards some of the things they need they should just you know sit around and just enjoy their summer away don't look like a holiday job to put towards their education or whatever it is so that's um a big thing that people need to forgive for because these children carry these things for years and years and the parents it might make them get so sad and have a bad um retirement life or so and they just get filled up with a lot of negative emotions and not very warm and don't want to be giving in any way again and they what we call right off each other and stuff like that and we have to just learn to live in unity you know sometimes you know things happen you know and it's not even your fault but you just say you know what and say so you have a family member someone have money to you stop talking to each other it could be that it's, it's not you you know it could be the family member and they don't want to be the first one to talk it's a, especially if you're a christian you can't watch that you have to be the one to just say uh, start make this conversation and you know put everything behind you and forgive them and say because sometimes you hold on to things you say it don't make sense there are things it's i read this book once and i learned this thing because somebody could have said something that hurt somebody you see if you're going to say something and it um it's gonna hurt cause a lot of hurt even though you're right something sometimes better sometimes it is better not to say anything because not because you're right it gives you the right to say something hurtful that can hurt that person for years and years and sometimes it could be just a little silly thing you know and you would have forgotten to about it in another week or a couple of days or something and then you go and say this thing now just because yes you are right and then it caused years of conflict so it sometimes just doesn't make sense just let go learn to let go of things you know um forgive your parents or whoever it is that pressured you into getting married to someone that was not your first choice or maybe it wasn't the one that you were really in love with and you got married and maybe never really could get over that first person that you really loved or never really love the person that you're with and it caused you a lot of hurt and resentment um, just learn to, to let go of it because you are your own person you know and if you make somebody else make you make a decision you can't really blame them because at the end of the day is you make that choice it's not them you could have said no you know if you did young you could have just said to yourself then just tell them so you go and wait a little bit before you get married or something you don't have to force this marriage thing and 
do what somebody wants you have to also forgive yourself for getting hurt in a relationship in that you never help you know hold a little piece of your heart for yourself but you just gave your all we would say in jamaica you just dash away your heart so to somebody and they just trampled all over it so you have to learn to we say we have a thing where we say we stand in love we don't fall in love so you don't just fall in love and get all weak and if the person leave you then you go crazy and all of that let me tell you it's just a part of life so much people have been hurting and that has happened to them so just forgive yourself and just move on but because part of you is saying if you stop thinking about it you're gonna forget and then you will get hurt again I just write it down and say if I need that information I can go back for that how to learn about relationships and stuff like that how to recognize certain types of men and we call them red flags now but back in those times we never call them red flags we just it's just about recognizing certain types of men and stuff like that so you have to read you have to read a lot to, a lot of the mistakes you make is because you're never really aware you know forgive yourself for investing forgive yourself for investing heavily into a relationship financially and then maybe you are divorced now or the relationship is no longer and you are broke you have nothing left for yourself maybe say a man sent a woman to school or even men a lot of women taking care of men now too you know but i find a lot of times a man take up a, a woman and send her to all university you know and when maybe mom is like a taxi driver or something and when she done university she don't want a taxi driver anymore who maybe didn't have a certain amount of education maybe she she wants somebody and maybe she met somebody on campus who she like and who they can talk about certain things more with or whatever it is and those things will hurt you know and people will do some serious things so it don't make sense think of it if somebody do that to you right so you are even say 40 year old and you go and hurt that person and you end up in jail for the rest of your life or even 10 years think of it if you did let that go in 10 or 20 years time you don't think you would have been in a better position than if it's not easy today no so not get to me don't you think you would have been in a better position by just walking away than to end being ending up in jail over that person in another 10 or 20 maybe even five years maybe even one year time you meet somebody who loves you so much you forget about them so just let go for your own sake all right forgive your parents for maybe spending a lot of money on a spouse and not saving back anything to help you with college and maybe you had a really hard time financially at college and you know when you look into it maybe it's not even your, your, your like your mother or your father or so but they, they spend it on some girlfriend or, or, or so and then you're seeing they spend so much money on, on somebody else and um, they didn't put down anything for your college and you had such a rough time maybe you had hungry you didn't have dinner or so going through college and all of that or you had to depend on other family members and maybe they treat you badly when they're supposed to help you so you maybe you build up some resentment there it's just a part of life experiences everybody's going to try and find a way to make themselves happy sometimes foolishly so um maybe it's a time of weakness for the parents look into your life and see how you have made similar or done things which are wrong right and remember you know a lot of children think of their parents as super beings super humans you know so they're not supposed to make any mistake and it's all a learning process nobody born a parent is something you learn over time that's why you see some parents they are better with the younger children because when they see how what they did is that they, they learn from the mistakes from the older ones and um, they might be even say more strict and harsh on the, the first children they have and then they realize that those children grew up resenting them so they they learn from that and they are a little softer on the on the, the younger children and even in those cases sometimes the older children 
are resentful of that and say how oh, they do this and do that and how they treated the younger siblings better than they treated them you know sometimes the poor parents maybe just doing it not even something that they think about but it's just something that happened you know maybe they get worn out and tired now and they can't nitpick every little thing in, in the younger children because they're just tired life hard you know all these years taking care of kids and working and maybe having problems at work sometimes in the older children too the parents maybe were just set, starting off in life and had life harder and maybe by the younger children the parents were more established in life have more money and they were a happy happier and had more time to to um for the children or just were just happier people and could do more fun things and so so that's something you have to think about too yes forgive you have to forgive all your bosses you know sometimes you had some really terrible bosses you were there to help them and instead of they seeing you as someone there to help them they started to see you as competition maybe you're brilliant and they feel that you make them look bad because you were so you were there you are there and doing things they couldn't do themselves and the whole point is that you came to that job to do the what you were employed to do and the boss saying boss we are there to help starting to get jealous of you and maybe fire you from the job for some other reason maybe don't even make you finish your 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 time there in your what you call it the probation period when you know you can just fire you without you um, any repercussions so uh, you might have resented them because maybe you lost your job and it took a little while for you to get back another job so you just just move on and leave them to God because it's when you let go and forgive them sometimes you end up finding a better job and you're around better people because if somebody's gonna do that to you you have to they're not worth being there or helping you know God sees and knows all things even when you see people doing things to you sometimes in meetings you know and they will try to try their best not to let you talk because they don't want you to open your mouth because they don't want your brilliance to show you know and they will not invite you to certain meetings who certain top people will be at you know because they just want you to to like hide you then hide you get you to do the work to make them look good but they want to hide you but don't pay them any mind if you know you're a star you're a star you know what who god bless no man can curse you know so and as i say everybody have, will have their day everybody will have their day to answer to god and that's why i always say if you have children be careful how you treat others because sometimes the things that is that happen to their children they don't realize is some of their the same thing with generational curses the same bad things that they have done are falling on their children that's why you have to break off the generational curses because sometimes parents the things that falling on their children so just forgive them and move on you know some of them not even get along with their own families so how they all get along with you as a stranger you know so just just move on shake it off you know shake it off and move on forgive that spouse or that high school sweetheart or whoever it is that maybe you had children for in your younger days who you spent a lot of your prime in your life with have children for them sacrifice for them so that they could maybe in their businesses so that people on this guys i'm struggling with the sun it's always me that the car I drive and the sun just are going away if i follow the sun i don't do the video so i'm just gonna go ahead and talk all right um forgive those persons who you have given so much of your life to and you spent time with and they didn't marry to you they went and married to somebody else you gave the prime of your life to you were the mother for the children and they didn't get married to you and in a heartbeat they just go and find somebody else and leave you with the kids and got married and and maybe they're even wealthy and now because of and have a nice business going because of the sacrifices you made and how you help that person and 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 when you should be enjoying now the fruits of your labor somebody else is enjoying it so this may that be a lesson to other people who are listening to this video you don't give everything to somebody else and their business make sure while you're building with them you're building for yourself too now because you're married married marriage is not everything in terms of it's no guarantee right because sometimes you might even get if you have good lawyers or whatever it is 
or she, you might not get what you're worth, what your worth are due. And it, it might just don't make sense in terms of even if you get half of the money or you might get the house. But what is a house alone? Maybe you get the house, it's worth a lot of money. But if you if you get the house and it's valued at a certain amount of money and you don't have shares in the business, the business is that is that thing that is gonna go on for years and years and years and you might not even have the money to maintain the house. So you have to go enough sell that house and do and start your own business from scratch while his that person's business is established. I've seen that happen to people. So just make sure while you're sacrificing and help someone to build your business, you're building your business too. Forgive the parents who went abroad to work and never returned. Or just leave it with grandma or grandpa or aunties and uncles who use the money that your parents sent um, to that spend on their children so that they could instead of spending that money on you so and make you feel like uh, the odd one or make you, you feel unloved and when you see your cousins with their family you know with all the attention and then you're just sitting like a corner watching everybody your parents might send the barrel they call them barrel children with the nice clothes and stuff but you didn't get that love so some parents abroad they can't understand why the children resent them so much money is not everything you know and I know a lot of your parents went abroad and worked really hard but there's nothing like being there for your children and even when some of you send for your children you have them up there with some spouse who don't who don't treat them good so a lot of that cause a lot of resentment right and um, those children don't learn love parental love and they carry that same anger or whatever it is to their own children some mothers you know they feel like our fathers or whoever it is they might feel like their children don't deserve better than them you know so that's why they continue to treat their children like how they they, they, they were treated some of them are even jealous of their children and they don't want the children to have a better life than they had it's a terrible thing but it is the truth so you have to forgive the parents them just make sure when you have your life and your children you don't make the mistakes that they make and the love that you will get from your children will help the healing process from that resentment you have towards your parents yes for, forgive your mother who maybe you felt gave her love or the best of the food and gave her the scraps I hear some people talk how the mother would um, put the father food in Pyrex dish and well cover up and stuff and then they just give them what they call the what left and the, you know and they didn't get the, the the nice meaty part of the chicken they get the bones and the scraps and stuff like that those are the things that eat up a lot of people so when the parents get old they treat the parents um, terrible so um just move on from that and forget about that i have seen to forgive your parents for um having you outside of marriage for you being the one who had to not be uh, thank god for mr manley who said no bass on the day again you weren't you were what they call in jamaica outside children you didn't belong to the husband Sorry, it didn't belong to the wife and um, your mother maybe was still in a relationship with them or just never had much of a relationship with the father and the father maybe never gave the children much attention and all of that and even some children the stigma attached I want there was this this person I knew who was saying that they always felt badly about being the illegitimate child and um, for them it was so important to get out of that stigma that they got married early because they thought it was some big thing attached to being married you know so the what they didn't get in their childhood of being the child of the wife they thought they got it in their adulthood through marriage but that person but that person didn't heal they went into the marriage with that same problem and those hurts and the marriage didn't work out for them so and they still could not um 
be with certain type of people because they felt that other people were better than them so they went to uh, they found um you know somebody who they thought were more at their level they wouldn't have to feel like that person is better than them in any way even in terms of being a child of parents who were married to each other one other thing you have to one of the things you have to understand, you know, is um, some of the men who had children outside, they couldn't really let the wives know, you know, because remember the wife is the one in the house and handling the money and all of that sometimes. And they have children at home too. And when a man in business also, they want that base, the, the, that um, stability. And um, they might not want to let go of that or risk giving that up to let the wife find out about the children and if sometimes a part of the woman forgiving the man and moving on from that is that they let the man agree that they will not see the child or will not have a relationship with the child or else they're gonna leave and the men maybe do that to just keep the home situation calm or in some instances the wife don't even know about the the other children so what they do is um they just let that person they try their best they do it to do everything so that the wife will not find out especially if it is in a community nearby where they know similar people they will try their best and if anybody see them going around the child they will go back and tell the wife so sometimes that's how some uh, men don't pay attention or the children that don't belong to the wife and um, so you find the children might have some resentment see so you see that generational trauma coming from both sides you would think the children in the marriage are okay but they are the ones there you know hearing the arguments about the children every time they hear because they are the ones who are hearing about the children um, the arguments about the outside children and stuff like that or when the wife here and get upset and they're quarreling or something get, and you know children are always going to want to be close to their parent and sometimes they might even resent the, 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 that parent loving the children in the marriage more than them in their minds you know sometimes the, the parents love them you know but just as much but they just weren't able to show it so you have to just and also some men just irresponsible they don't use protection and they just have children all over the place and don't play any fatherly role you know so um sometimes it's a woman control the money so the man if the man spend anything on the children then the, the wife the wife find out say children out there are him spending him money somewhere else so you have to think about all these things no excuses for anyone because we are all big people and we have to have accountability for our actions you know so unfortunately that is what has happened and um, let's forget and move on and God always bless these children with nice marriages you know and good husbands and good wives who, who are the outside children and suffer out there in the in the young days um, forgive the people who you helped but never helped you sometimes it's not the people that you help who will help you back um, even though they're in a position to help um, forgive the people who you thought of as friends and when they could have helped you they were expecting benefits benefits um, to come with that help I have lost friends because of that people I thought were my friends um, forgive the people who um, were somewhat a part of the reason you lost your assets. Maybe you lost your house, your car, or something, or even lost your spouse. Maybe you they took out a loan and you were the one with the security, and they did not um, fulfill their side of the the agreement and weren't paying their their loan amounts, and then they fell into arrears and you ended up losing whatever you had put up for security and you ended up maybe homeless or just had to go back to renting or starting all over again to own a home again or whatever it is so maybe you took in friends into your house or whatever when they were going through a hard time and they because of that it ended up changing the dynamics of your home situation and your spouse couldn't deal with it and 
it ended up ruining your, ruining your relationship. So that's another thing. When you are married or have your spouse and you're living at home, even if it's family, be careful of who you take into your home because it can affect your relationship in a negative way. So better you help them with a little rent or something if they're going through a hard time. Let them find a room somewhere. Because you can get a room to even in Jamaica, you can get a room and even share a bathroom for a little bit of money. It's better than taking somebody into your house, especially a woman taking her friend into a house. That's not a good idea. Sometimes those same friends end up stealing your husband from you, so be careful. Sometimes you have to forgive yourself for making really silly, silly decisions in life. Forgive your exes for whatever reason they hurt you. You know, just forgive them. A lot of people hold on to hurts with exes and because of that, they bring those hurts into other relationship and keep hurting people over and over because they may have shut down emotionally. Forgive those people who want you to fail, especially in the workplace, you will see them. Something might happen and they will just try their best to break you down. You might be in meetings and something happen and they just rejoice and even make it the situation worse than it needs to be. So, um, especially sometimes you're new somewhere and nobody helps you with anything. You have to struggle and learn the things. There are certain do's and don'ts in companies. Nobody tells you because they want to see you fail because maybe you're coming, the position you're coming to is too high. But at times I see general managers and so coming to companies and nobody gives them the information or the correct information because somebody there might have felt they should have gotten that position you know so um just forgive them and move on as i said when other people hurt you god is the one who promotes you your your life is not destined by their behavior right especially when you become a child of god you know to pray off those things you know rebuke them with the blood of jesus pray them off pray off the evil and the bad men out of your lives okay sometimes um your parents also may have not have led the healthiest of lifestyles and you felt that they passed away too soon and you you're resentful of that because maybe they passing away have caused you so much hurt and have maybe caused a lot of responsibilities for the family falling on you and you have were forced to become an adult too soon because you have had to maybe take care of your siblings and stuff like that you know forgive them for making maybe bad financial decisions in life which, as I said, you start to work and you have to be taking care of even them too soon and everybody else. So just forgive yourself. As I say, the forgiveness part could be a whole video by itself, but I'm trying to incorporate. Sometimes you feel that um, you might have good relationships with your siblings and as soon as they start getting into relationships and stuff, you feel like they just forget everything about you. Sometimes they even start to have children and they just forget like you never existed or so. That's why you have to build your own relationships. If that is so important to you, then you maybe have to have your own children who you can love you and you love them back, right? Because that's how life is. You become adults, you have family, and do you and the, the wife or the husband become one. So you're not going to have as much of those people in your life as you want them to be as um, they were before. So you have to also find somebody move on and if you can't find somebody you just go and live your life you know and don't use it to as something to be resentful for just understand that's what his life is all about because if a lot of so many people doing it maybe that's how it is supposed to be that um they just have to and it also depends on how their spouses maybe they spouse just want them for themselves and don't want them to be around their family so much maybe you go and you, you look for them and you you get the side bad eye <laughs> and so you just have to just keep your con and, and stay at your yard and stop what people yard that sort of thing so there are so many things in this world that you i can't even list all of them that you have to just move on from the generational trauma sometimes you might have to go and seek professional help you know even churches sometimes can't manage that alone you might have to get real professional help and even say have a family get if it's a some families when they get together you know it's pure trauma so um if it's a family that you can get together and talk try to get together and talk without their spouses there because sometimes you 
let me tell you something it's not everything your spouse must know about your family it, and if you confide in you in, in a, that's another thing you see if your sibling confiding you about something if you know you're not going to be able to keep it to yourself tell them don't confide in you because you're going to end up telling you if you're the type of person that's going to tell your spouse right and can sometimes they take that and go tell their family and then your business all over the place you don't really want that in 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 your life so um you just have to find a way if you can gather together and talk about things of a little you know and you can say all right you don't have to just tell your ask your brother or sister and say um let's let's go to lunch today and i'm going to talk about some more talk about not even there's some things on my mind i want to, to just get your opinion on and see if you think the same way and say if you don't mind if we can just do it together without anybody else there that sort of thing and open up and you see you can have a little talk and so and um and another thing you know is so when you get married or you have a spouse it's not every time you go and look for your parents you must bring them sometimes the parents have things they want to talk about you know but they don't want to talk about it in front of your spouse so you have to give your family some time especially um i think women always have a lot to talk about so the mothers just give them a little alone time so that they can talk and so and and it's everything your parents tell you you must go back and tell your spouse if it's something very personal about their lives or something right and um another thing too to forgive your stepmother or stepfather if they made you feel really bad about who you are or they turn you might see it as turn your parent against you or turn their children against you by what they say because a lot of times you know it's really the wives that do this i don't think men do that a lot a lot of times the women will not want their children to have a good relationship with the the, the husbands other children who are not theirs you know and a lot of times they treat them different a lot of times especially if you can obviously look on them and see that it's not the wife's children and it looks so different from her children they will treat those children really badly and it might make that child grow up have such a bad self-image and end up it turn into resentment sometimes they have so much resentment they can't even make something of themselves sometimes it's that they, they, they even say things that are so ingrained in their children's um minds that the children are also incapable of having a good relationship with their other brothers and sisters outside of the marriage so a lot of these things we really have to get professional help on and i will talk some more on this and then we wrap up so when you are healing now from trauma you're going to find that you have a lot of um things to deal with on your mind a lot of stuff on your mind so as i spoke about you try to to practice mindfulness but another thing now is you're gonna feel more exhausted than normal because your mind is working so much so take breaks when you can if you have to take a take your vacation days they're there for you to take it's very important for you to take your vacation days at work if you're sick take your medical your medical days because when you're sick and traumatized about other things it just makes you feel worse so if you're feeling sick you go to the doctor get your medication you go home and get some rest that sort of thing um tap into your creative side if there's stuff that's supposed like for me when i go into the kitchen nothing i worry about nothing because that's my safe space that's my happy place my kitchen so i enjoy being in my kitchen um you can do like art too if you can paint or get into jewelry making or just reading or so or watching tv whatever it is you like to do but i find doing creative things like painting or drawing or so it's very good I, I love to do like i'm learning about video editing well i'm editing my own videos now but when i'm doing stuff like that and you know you go for walks go to the park if you have a pet a lot of people love having a little pet like a dog or a cat or so whichever pet you like um that might help to soothe you to keep you calm um anything that you enjoy doing that that's a good thing to tap into at this time when you're feeling traumatized one, one of the things you have to do is learn about resp resp how you respond to fear and um it could be something from childhood and what you have learned you know there are different ways there's one 
response is fight. That means you're the type of person, as soon as something happens um, that gets you upset, you might want to be fighting. The other one is flight mode. So flight mode is where you just want to get away as quickly as possible. So that you can maybe experience this in relationships as soon as you see a red flag because maybe what you have experienced in the past, you just get out of that relationship as quickly as possible because you maybe there's something in the relationship that triggered you or something, you know. That you might go on a date and just one experience you never want to go on another date with that person because something about them triggered something in you. Another one is to freeze. Some people think once they keep quiet, so maybe they were growing up and they had an alcoholic parent and once they kept quiet, they would just maybe feel like they're disappearing so the, per the parent will not see them and abuse them. So maybe that, they bring that into their adulthood now and they're with a partner when they start quarreling or so you just freeze or whatever it is and you can't respond. Maybe you're in a situation that is fearful and um you just can't move you're just standing there because you know you're you you're you just keep quiet you know the other one now is fawn fawning which is something i learned recently the fawning now is the other is the fourth one the fourth response this is where you just you ever heard it, the saying you fawn over someone so you might be um you just try to please them and do everything that you feel like if somebody's especially people in relationships where they're being abused and they feel that if they just do all that is good to the person and just be around them and you know just doing everything to please them that is a way they will try to deal with that traumatic situation so they feel that once they are pleasing that person doing things to please the person then they won't react and get upset and get angry and start the abuse you know so for example maybe the as a person come in you offer them a drink and you give them their dinner you cook their favorite meal and then you know any little thing you just trying to please them as much as possible but that can be very draining too and that's not what you really want because you want to be able to just relax and and have a normal relationship so those are the four responses to fear so we're not saying you're not going to be fearful in certain situations because fear is a natural response the brain has in trying to keep you safe so if you're somewhere and you hear a lot of noise or if um like um some violence is happening you would try and hide away because you don't want to be a part of that so um it fear is also uh, but you have to understand when it is healthy and it's not healthy you know there is something i want to talk about today again another point about creating generational wealth which is a um another thing about healing from generational um poverty right um is cars do not get caught up in this thing where you have to change your car every four or five years if your car is not breaking down do not change your car don't think you have to be one of those people who have to have one of the latest cars right especially if you don't own a house so many people are driving around in the latest vehicle and they don't own a house even if you can buy a house to rent it out if it's not where you want to live because um where i live you know i was always waiting on this perfect house and then my father was a contractor so i didn't grab on quickly to some of the cheaper houses because in my mind my dad was gonna build my house for me so when my father passed and i realized um he's not gonna be able to build my house anymore i have to buy like everybody else um I get another contractor which I didn't want um, I realized that I have to go I missed out on those houses so I'll my friends who bought into like say for example the Portmore original houses when the newer houses that the gated communities came around they sold those houses and they had a very small mortgage for the gated community houses right so um people now who were buying for the first time would have a larger mortgage so at the time i think for example some of the 
other Portmore houses were selling for 8 million so they used that 8 million and paid down on their at the time I think those houses were going for over 10 million um, the, the gated communities and they just pay down on, on, on that and have a smaller mortgage and within a couple years they pay off within five years they pay off the mortgage so that's a way of accumulating generational wealth instead of buying a number not to, not to say not to drive a dream car now, but if you're in a situation where you have you're dealing with debt or you're building right a lot of the millionaires they didn't buy in a big expensive vehicle so for me my car as long as it continues to be okay i'm just gonna spray it over right because where i park birds tend to drop things always on it and it burns up the bonnet so um i have to spray over even the bonnet i have to spray over i don't basically who want to drive the latest of whatever vehicle i know what my my plans are you know because house is a priority pay off your house first before if you can before you buy another vehicle and if you can um if you're married and you can live on one vehicle it's better than um having two vehicles and you don't have a home so and another thing when it's in that situation i must speak to the men men you don't have to have the car all the time um let get a woman the car sometimes let you just go breeze out if she wants you don't have to always have the car to go to your football match and do all those things right she might want to go to the gym or whatever it is okay that's why a lot of people prefer to have their own car because sometimes too when you're waiting on the person to come and pick you up you know you finish work on 4 35 5 30 or 7 o'clock the men just coming to pick up the woman from work and it's not like they had anything doing special they just at work chatting and with their friends and stop somewhere and chatting and all of that so that's my point today another point on um paying off debts not business not paying any mind to what other people are saying and keeping up um with the car with the joneses you just focus on building your wealth and you have to act some i hear some people talk about like abroad some of the the people who are giving tips on wealth and they're saying that um you shouldn't purchase a property because it's it's a liability because you have to fix it up and pay to fix up your property and all of that and keep doing repairs and maintenance while well, when you rent you don't have all of that expense but listen what happened over time you know rent increase more and rent a lot of times is more than a mortgage so if you were paying your mortgage instead of rent you would that would be going into an asset that you have and if you're renting when you reach old and reach pensionable age now you're not getting the big income anymore you have to be still renting suppose you live to be at 100 you have enough money to pay rent until you're 100 years old and the thing another thing when you're renting too the landlord can't just say oh they want the house now they're going especially some who are abroad they might say oh they're moving back to jamaica and they, they want the house now or they just raise up the rent on you they can't really plan like that so i believe in buying your house as quickly as possible when you're young try to buy your house when you're young and that's why i said it's good when parents can help out the children a little when they start out because if you can't help your child with a, nothing is wrong with helping your child with a deposit on a home you know you can even give, give them as a loan and later on the payback right and um they don't have that big interest they get charge them a little interest which is a little suppose it's a retirement money you let them pay them a little interest which is less than if um than what the bank would charge or they could rent they could buy the house rent it out and still continue to live in your house you know so things like that you have to think about another thing with houses too if you buy a house over the years so after 10 years or even after five years remember house costs go up over time so after five years you know what you're paying for mortgage is much less than what people paying for rent or what if you buy a house at that time you would pay 
so even like some people who like say 15 years after their mortgage is a little bit of money because their their income would have gone up so much over 15 years so they could they could um easily easily be affording all two three mortgages at that time if they had enough money to pay a deposit on a house in the initial phase you know um a couple years ago and another thing um in jamaica some banks in the first three years of the mortgage they don't allow you to pay down on the the principal but what you can and some of them don't allow you to pay down on the principal either on online so what you might have to do is go into the bank or the building society and deposit a certain amount of money and say i want this to go to the principal sometimes you, if you do that every month over a period of time or if you get a bonus and you use take a portion out of your bonus and and deposit on the principal it will cut down so much on your mortgage payments and the time the life of your mortgage because doing that um because remember you know the first couple years of your mortgage all you're paying is interest right and it's after they pay the bank smart is after they finish paying you finish paying the interest now you start to pay on the principal so if you decide i'm on a bumpy road so if you decide that you're going to pay down on that mortgage now on the principal of the mortgage then you would pay off your mortgage if you have a 20 year mortgage maybe you can pay it off in 15 years or even 10 years when i look back on my mortgage if i was paying off a certain amount like every time i get a bonus even if i use 25 percent of my bonus i would have finished paying off my mortgage a long time ago oh my this road is so bumpy guys so that's my little tip on creating ouch 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 and creating generational wealth and getting what of this so okay guys remember to like subscribe share and leave a comment leave a nice little comment to say just give me it could be just a nice video or just give me some constructive um and take your time with me give me some constructive um tips so if there's a certain type of video you prefer or if you want you, you can expand on a point i'm making you know to let the other viewers understand more what's happening if you're an expert in the field and know more to you can write down down the bottom in the comments what you think and give more tips to help others because we're all about helping each other so that's a more an important thing too we can heal together and help out each other because everybody is going through some sort of situation and um, we're gonna be here for each other all right